Welcome back to uh, talk about lecture 12. Uh, we're going to give you a uh, example using Excel spreadsheet to implement primal and do a fine scaling algorithm. Uh, we're using the same example we used before and this is the problem. And again, this is the A matrix right here and B vector in blue and the C uh, cost coefficient in in gray and then we settle any type of uh, current primal solution initial do solution initial do slag and I'm using the uh, <coughs> initial uh, mu equals to one actually we can actually use uh, x times x as one of the mu to start with doesn't matter Okay, for this case, for this I can calculate the due infeasibility t, pri uh, uh, primal infeasibility t, and due infeasibility u, and the duality uh, get, uh, complementary slackness, for example, and complementary slackness divided by x vector equals to p, right here. <coughs> Here we can calculate the d square to begin with as basically x divided by s in the diagonal matrix, okay? And we can calculate a times d square, which is a matrix in the yellow times this yellow d square, pre-calculate. Then we can calculate inverse of a times d square times a transpose, which is this portion times a transpose and take the inverse which is the purple area we follow exactly the step for the uh, algorithm and the paper and we're using u minus p is in the u minus p in the gray area okay and then we calculate a times d squared times u minus p plus t in the orange area and we use this to this portion purple area times the orange area give me the d omega okay and the, using the d omega to calculate here is the equation okay calculate d omega and <clears throat> after d omega was calculated we're using uh, this portion to calculate the uh, A transpose times uh, D omega using uh, G9. Okay. G. Using the U minus that equals to the DS. We follow exactly the method right here. Okay, u minus a transpose times d omega, and then we calculate uh, dx equal to d square, uh, dk squared times pk minus ds. Okay, let's take a look at it again. So we can calculate d omega, ds, and dx's. We make sure d a times dx is close to zero. So that means the primal direction is uh, feasible direction. So this part is a little bit more complicated. We calculate <coughs> uh, this uh, step size based on this two equation. Let's take a look how we're going to do that. We're using dxk divided by a dsk divided by alpha times xk. So let's take a look. Here for each one of SKI, I calculate DS, a negative DSK times uh, DS, uh, the XK itself. So DXK divided by alpha times this. So this is uh, choosing the maxima, okay, between one and this, okay. So if it's greater than one, it will take it. So here is 1.4666. It's greater than one, so this will be the candidate and rest of the negative will be ignored because these are these are not going to bound my solution and then we take one over 
over here, over that, and, and propagate it for all coordinates. Okay, all index. Same thing, we're going to calculate the ds. Okay, ds equals to uh, ds divided by s times omega. And I'm going to only choose the maximum of uh, one or all these values. Since <clears throat> all these are negative value, so I will end up with the one as my step length, both for due slag and for the due variable. Based on the step size beta x or beta s, I can update my primal solution, due solution, and the due slag. We can immediately check, okay, the duality gap reduced quite a bit, and mu also reduced quite a bit. And then we can recalculate T, U, V, and P. Primal infeasibility, due infeasibility, complementary slackness, and complementary slackness uh, divided by X, which is uh, X. Objective function value right now, 0 0.066. We do another iteration right here, taking x divided by s and put it into a diagonal matrix. Calculate a times d squared, a matrix times this yellow area. Okay, calculate a times d squared times a transpose inverse, purple area. u minus p right here, recalculate. Calculate a times t squared times u minus p plus t. Based on that, times this inverse of a squared uh, a times t squared times a transpose inverse times this orange area, I can get d omega. Based on one more time, this is what we have. Okay, just remind it. Then once I have d omega, I can calculate u minus a transpose d omega equals to ds. So that's a ds. And based on the ds, I can calculate dx. Again, double check, a times dx is close to zero, enough. And based on the dx, I'm going to calculate the possible step length, taking one over minimum, since uh, 1 over whatever the maxima of these. So here what we have is uh, uh, 14.1435, uh, uh, 36 basically. So it's less than 1, so the maxima will be 1 in this case. It's 1 and this 0.14 something. So the step length for primal variable is going to be 1. Look at the step size for the due slack. Okay, due slack, direction, due, variable, divided by omega, uh, alpha, which is 0.99 times the S. Okay, so the maximum of those will be 1.0733 and 1, so that's 1.0733. So the step size is close to 0.93. We have Primal step size, do slack uh, step size, I can update primal variable, do variable, and do slack. Again, the steps uh, length for the do variable equals to the step length for the do slack. So I can also calculate the duality gap, which is x times s, calculate the new uh, penalty or barrier parameter mu, equals to the duality gap times the sigma. Sigma now is, is equal to 0 0.009 at this case. Once we calculate the prim, uh, primal induced solution in this iteration, I can again calculate the due, uh, prim, primal infeasibility, due infeasibility, the uh, complementary slackness condition, and the p, the objective function, uh, improve from 0.66 to 0.71 okay 
And this can continue another iteration, which is the third iteration. You see that in the third iteration, the objective function already converged to 0.9967, and primal infeasibility equal to almost zero. Due infeasibility is also equal to zero. And we can see that the complemental stackness, which is the duality gap, is also very close to zero as well, each one of the term. Okay, so we're really, really close to um, optimal solution, even using three, merely using three iteration. So we can guess from now, okay, the optimal uh, primal solution be one, zero, zero, and zero. Do solution, the optimal will be one, a negative one and negative zero, uh, and zero. Okay. Do slack optimal solution should be zero, one, one, and one. Like we said, if you find it before. So I continue to do a couple more iteration. You can see that. <clears throat> okay. The duality gap in right here converging to 10 to the negative 7, okay, in the fifth iteration, already, duality gap converging, pretty good, and each iteration, it uh, reduced the duality gap by 100 folds, I will say, and due infeasibility, primal infeasibility, um, uh, duality gap, which is, uh, on each coordinate, and they are all very close to zero right now. And my algebraic function equals to negative one, like we had before. So we carry out one more iteration, then I stopped, okay, because the duality gap reaches about 10 to uh, negative nine. So you're welcome to modify this uh, input data or using different models in the textbook and modify these A matrix, B matrix, and C matrix, see if they actually uh, follow through uh, the step. Okay, so better do this exercise. I'm, com uh, I'm <clears throat> stopping this portion of the uh, video. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.